Then he got out the boat after he prayed. Then he walked on water after he prayed. Then he stepped out on faith after he prayed. Step off the boat if you want to. Look at you. <laughs> Step in the deep end in the, of the pool and you don't know how to swim. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Peter, Peter got down off the boat, walked on water, and came towards Jesus. God sometimes has to Uber you away from some folks in your life. You know, you look at your Uber and it tells you where you are and it, you tell it where you want to go and, and then the Uber comes and gets you. Sometimes God needs to Uber you to a place where he can use you. He told Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, cross this Jordan and, and all this people to the land that I'm giving you, the sons of Israel. Look at God move me. He told Esther, I command you to, to risk your own life and go before the king. And she did. Look at God move me. But are you going to be like Jonah? And God tells you to go to Nineveh. But you decide to go to Tarsus. And guess what? Our favorite phrase doesn't work on God. You know what our favorite phrase is? You see what had happened was. <laughs> Come on everybody, put your hands together. It's got to get better. All over the world. Listen to these words. People come. People go. Your life has been, Your life has been out, of control. out of control. You're confused. You're confused. But don't worry. Don't worry your soul. It will get better. It's got to get better. It will get better. It's going to be better. It will get better. Because God, God is in, in control. control. That's what it's all about. Now look how it works now. Look how it works. He's in service. Not asking for a blessing, but you get a blessing when you're in service. Amen. You'll get after service, okay? But we are so honored and we're just so thankful and grateful to have somebody who is... They caught him off guard today, amen? Amen. <laughs> hey. I probably need to warn him next time. He might have almost had a cardiac arrest up there. <laughs> but when you're in service for God, expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Don't put no limits on your God. So my brother, my friend, I've been knowing him for over 30 years. Uh, fraternity brothers, cap up side, May 15th, no, March 15th, 1989. I was number one and he was number six. <laughs> He's been a funny man ever since I've known him, amen. He's laughed us out of trouble times, amen. He's a tutor in calculus. Uh, he's married to his lovely wife, 23, 24? Oh, excuse me. 25 years in September, amen. Sister Angie, stand up. His better half, amen. He goes nowhere without her, amen. Uh, but highly educated individual, got his uh, BS in engineering, got his MBA. Uh, he has successfully launched his own uh, business consulting firm that he's just doing incredible things, uh, travel around the world. Um, you know he's a friend of Life Church when yes. Life Church don't have to pay for his uh, travel costs, <laughs> his hotel costs. So that's a friend. That's a friend, amen? But not only that, the brother, he and his wife have sold big seeds into Life Church, amen? But that's when you recognize it's not about me. That's when you recognize God has blessed me to be a blessing. He has two lovely daughters, uh, Jordan and Jasmine. Uh, one just finished her freshman year at North Carolina A&T Engineering. 
the another one. She's about to graduate this year, Sister Joy. Y'all better watch out for her. She might be on a presidential debate coming up. But he serves as associate pastor up under his mother-in-law, who blessed us two years ago um, at the um, Love Life Christian Fellowship in um, Atlanta, Georgia. So we in Atlanta, Georgia, look up Love Life Christian Fellowship, and they will spoil you. Amen. Um, but he loves God, uh, teaches, preaches, uh, travels, and just has a heart for God, has a heart for God's people, and has a heart for giving his very best in everything that he does, as you're going to see as he comes and brings uh, the word to us. And so I'm just always humble to have him to come and to minister to us. So at this time, without any further ado, please receive my friend, our brother, the speaker, Elder. Funny man, Daryl Fitty in the house. So, Sister Pastor, he gonna close out because I'm not gonna be here when y'all get ready to close out. Amen. Amen. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. Thank you so very much in advance for allowing me to come and just share a word on your anniversary. If I could sing, I'd say, it's your anniversary. <laughs> but I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to stay in my lane. <laughs> your anniversary theme, transform for life to get better, a transformed future. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I have a transformed future. future. Can I give my shout outs to Pastor Green, First Lady D, Jazz, J, uh, to my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Grace C. Washington, who's not only my, my pastor, but she's also my mother-in-law, and she's really like a mom. So uh, shout-outs to my mom down there, to the ministers, the elders, the deacons, to the entire Life Church family. Give yourselves a shout-out. I see some folks from Victory. Victory's in the house. Victory, what's happening? I see you. Y'all, my beautiful bride, soon to be of 25 years, is in the house. Can you stand, boo-boo, one more time, just so I can see how beautiful you are. You know, I'm happy that I got a, a degree from FAMU, but the best thing I got from FAMU is that sister right there. <laughs> so that our time can be well spent, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for this church family. Lord, I thank you that they make me feel like I'm a part of this family every time I come. Lord, I thank you for this ministry here. I thank you for Pastor Green, Lord. I thank you for each and every one that's in the sound of my voice that you are allowing them to do ministry because ministry simply means to help. So I thank you, Lord, for everybody in the sound of my voice that we're trying to help somebody along the way. So, Lord, allow me to disappear today and let you appear. And I want you, Lord, to have a message for your people to help them transform. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. I know those of you who know me know that always in my shout-outs, I have to give a shout-out to Harold's Chicken. <laughs> a brother still loves his mild sauce on the side. And give me salt and back pepper, please. So shout outs to Harold's. <laughs> Turn with me to 1 John 3, verses 2 and 3. Let's go live, Life Church. Let's go live. Yeah. I got to stick with your theme. 1 John 3, 2 and 3, and it goes a little something like this. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known, but we know that when Christ appears... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. My brothers and sisters, being a child of God is not a future event. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm a child of God right now. In addition, our future has not yet been completely revealed in eternity with the Lord. Believers will experience a new body and exist forever in God's presence. 
in a way far superior than our lives are today. (laughs) John anticipates this appearing will take place at a moment. Believers will see God as he is. John's words appear to be closely connecting these scriptures to the rapture. Somebody say, I'm going to be raptured up. When I see Jesus transform for life to get better, a transform future, a transformation. A tadpole becomes a frog. A creepy crawly caterpillar becomes a butterfly. (laughs) And it's been said that even an old chunk of coal can become a diamond. Turn to you and say, but neighbor, neighbor, are you coal, are you coal or a diamond? <laughs> your life might feel like right now, Life Church, that you're in your coal phase. Because in order for the carbon and coal to become a diamond, it must go through some pressure. It must be heated. It must go through some stuff, and it is transformed into a diamond turn to your neighbor and say neighbor the stuff I've been through I might be a three carat diamond the stuff I've been through I might be a four carat diamond the stuff I've been through I'm linging <laughs> I'm a 20 carat pastor says <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say neighbor How many carrots do you have? I want to know your cut. I want to know your clarity and your carrots. What about me? What about me, little preacher man? Does Jesus promise that we shall not die but simply be transformed from one life unto the other? Somebody say, yes, he does. Yes, he does. This is our hope. This is our destiny. This is just this life, but we have another life that's going to be much grander than this one. We were created for better than this. We also know that this life has not been to be the sum total of our existence. We know because the Bible tells us so. And lessons in nature also break this down. Watch this. In Philippians 3.20 it says... Our citizenship is in heaven. We happy to be in the shy, but we'd rather be in heaven. Who needs a transformation today, Life Church? Where you at? Who needs a mental transformation? Who needs a financial transformation? Who needs a career transformation? Who needs a relationship transformation? Who needs an education transformation? Who needs an attitude transformation? Who needs a faith transformation? Who needs a spiritual transformation? Because transforming means you are changing. Transforming means you are evolving. Transforming means you are learning. Transforming means you are becoming. Transforming means you are not where you need to be. But you sure enough ain't where you used to be. Some of us have gone through a lot of storms, a lot of turmoils, but we are not where we used to be. We're transforming. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm transforming. I'm going through a spiritual metamorphosis. You used to know me in my caterpillar days, but now I'm a black butterfly. (laughs) You might have known me when I was a tadpole, but now I'm leaping like a frog around this camp. See, all of us are the artists formerly known as, but now I'm transforming into a new creation that God wants me to be. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm transforming. We are changing toward what? We are evolving toward what? We're changing towards Jesus. We're evolving 
towards Jesus. We're changing towards Jesus. We're evolving towards Jesus. We are going through a spiritual metamorphosis to be more like him. By definition, we are a Christian church, therefore Christ-like. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm transforming. You see, we serve an awesome God who never stops amazing. He manifests his blessings, his grace, and his mercy endureth forever. Can a brother break it down? It's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. You got to get one more thing from Whole Foods to make this spectacular Thanksgiving dinner. You know it ain't going to be no parking there at the Whole Foods. But watch this. You pull up and there's a parking space right out front. You pull in there and you say, look at God. Can I break it down? You roll up in the Harris chicken. Prime time. And you walk in and you the first person in line. And you think to yourself, look at God. <laughs> Can I break it down? You got to check out of nowhere. Just in time, you were about to call the last person you wanted to call for a long. You say, look at God. <laughs> Can I break it down? You completed your first time home buyer's program and finally you're able to get into something that you own and not that you paying rent for. And you walk into your house and you say, look at God. Can I break it down? You just got promoted to a job you weren't qualified for. I want you to walk into your new office and say, look at God. Can I break it down? You walked away from that accident, brother scream, and you was in the hospital at a, uh, for a long time, but look at him now, and he wakes up every morning and say, look at God. Can I break it down? Young people, you passed a test that you didn't study for. Look at God. Can I break it down? Can I channel my inner Maya Angelou and say, look at God. <laughs> Can I break it down? You just found a $20 bill in your coat from last year and your lunch money was a little light. Look at God. <laughs> We're transforming, we're transforming. We love this phrase, look at God. It means we came up. It means he delivered us. It means he brought us out. It means he's working it out for our good. It means he showed up on your behalf. It means that you received an unexpected blessing. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. This means that God has just reminded you who he really is. That means we know where to look. We look to which cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh from the Lord. We love these look at God moments in our life. Compare, contrast, compare, contrast, compare. You failed the test that you weren't prepared for. Look at you. You got fired from a job because you were late 10 times in the last 60 days. Turn to your name and say, look at you. You ignored the advice of your physicians and you're back in hospital, in the hospital 
again. Look at you. You are in deep debt because you like to shop all the time. And since you like to shop all the time, you're going to be where I like to call on the plantation. Because MasterCard going to make sure he gets his. And you might be looking good, but you on the plantation. I'm trying to get some folks off the plantation today. So look at you. The doctor told you to cut back on your fried foods. You had the front of the line in Harrods on a 12 piece snack. With extra sauce. <laughs> Turn to your name and say, Look at you. <laughs> you earned that GPA. Look at you. You decided that working out just don't work for you. Look at you. <laughs> I know y'all thinking, can we go back to that look at God? <laughs> I know you're thinking. I know you're thinking. <laughs> look at you. Look at God. Look at you. Look at God. Look at you. Look at God. We live our lives between the look at you and the look at God. We know God is undefeated. We are on his team, but we're still living in the look at you. We love our look at God moments, but we struggle sometimes with the medals of look at you that we've earned. <laughs> we would have a lot more medals if it not were for his grace and his mercy. His grace and his mercy. You see, mercy is when God doesn't give you what you look at you earned. Can we just pause for a second right there? Now that I've got your attention. Can we just stand and give God praise for not saying look at you and walking away at that time in your life when you know you did wrong? Can we just stand and give God praise for putting some money on your books when you were somewhere behind bars and nobody but God could come and see you where you at? Can we just thank him for keeping the lights on when they should have been off and you were praying in the dark but God had lights stay on in your house? You can sit down, you can sit down, you can sit down. I've come by on your anniversary this morning just to say that God loves you yes. in spite of you. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, loves God loves me in spite of me. Spite of me. Even when you live a look at you lifestyle, God cares for you. Yes. When you look at you, you don't see the same thing that God sees in you. When you look at you, you see failure. God sees you as a diamond. When you look at you, you don't see flaws. God say, you woke up like this. <laughs> Flawless. Because your sins were paid for on the cross. Yes, 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 yes. Our goal should be that we die to our will and we take on God's will daily. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. God is always able, but we don't make ourselves always available for his service. He is transforming you for service. He's transforming you for ministry through this visionary here at Life Church. Look at God transform me. We are subject ready. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Our, subject is, our subject is, look at God. <laughs> so that I can get you ready, can I give you your three points in advance? Your first point is going to be, look at God, choose me. 
Your second point is going to be, look at God, move me so I can work it out. Look at God, choose me. Look at God, move me. And then your third point is going to be, look at God, use me. Let's go live. Let's go live. Can we make it personal? Repeat after me. Look at God. Choose me. Look at God. Move me. Look at God. Use me. Look at God. Look at God. Born a virgin. Look at God. He turned water into wine. Look at God. Numerous healings. Look at God. Calming the storm. Look at God. He raised folks from the dead. Look at God. Jairus' daughter had been dead but rose immediately. Look at God. A man's withered hand was restored. Somebody say, look at God. Look at God choose you. You have a transformed future life, church, because God has chosen you. Ephesians 1 and 4 says it like this. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. In his sight. First Peter 2 and 9 breaks it down like this. But you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. <laughs> a holy nation. It's time, Life Church, to break the cycle of look at you. Look at you, look at you, look at you. It's time to climb out of your depression. Look at God transform you. It's time to battle back. You are on a team that's undefeated. It's time to let go and let God. He's transforming you. It's time for you to see a new you in your mirror every time you wake up. You don't see the you that's being under pressure. You don't see the you that's transforming. You see the diamond that God sees in you. Young people, some of you may be battling with some self-esteem issues, but God says you're beautifully and wonderfully made. The enemy wants you to say that you're ugly, but you have to let him know that you are a diamond. The enemy wants you to think you are a cubic zirconia, but you are a 20 carat. You have been reconciled by Christ. You have been born again by the Holy Spirit. You are saved by grace and nothing you can do. God is transforming you because he has chosen you. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. On what basis did God choose you? First Peter 1 and 3 says it like this. For it is his boundless mercy that has given us the privilege of being born again so that we now are members of God's own family. Turn to his neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus is my daddy. Jesus is my daddy. God has chosen you because he knows that you are able. He's chosen you because he knows that you are faithful. He's chosen you because he knows you are willing to serve. He has chosen you because you're not easily moved. He's chosen you to watch over his flock, Pastor Green. He's chosen you to be his mouthpiece. He's chosen you to give him all praise, honor, and glory. And watch Life Church grow. Look at God choose you. Look at God choose you. Look at God choose you. I'm ready for point two. Look at God move me. There are so many times in our lives when God calls us to go somewhere or do something, but it requires our faith. There are times when God has told you to move, but it requires some faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if I can see it, it ain't faith. But if I have to imagine that God has to provide a flow for me to step on, but I step anyway, that's faith. Go with me to Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 through 33. A wonderful familiar story that allows me to set this life point up of look at God move me again Matthew 14 22 to 33 
This is where Jesus walks on water. Immediately Jesus met with the disciples, get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he dismissed them, he went on to a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. Watch this. Buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. The Bible goes on to say, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the water. Look at God. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. Y'all know we don't like ghosts. <laughs> but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Now watch this. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come on the water. Come, he said. Watch this. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you have to step out on faith. Look at God move you. Sometimes you have to get off the boat. But one of the things that keeps you on the boat, turn to your neighbor and say, boat people. Some of you have some friends, but some of them friends are comfortable on the boat. Even though Jesus himself is walking on water, both people are saying, where you going, Peter? You better stay on this boat. Look at God, move me. Look at God, move me. But Peter said, Lord, if it be you, let me come off this boat with these boat people. <laughs> God is asking you to step out on faith and do some ministry here at Life Church. And there's a boat person telling you not to. God has told you to work on your marriage and your boat people side chick is telling you to leave. <laughs> Somebody say boat people. God is moving you to walk on water for this ministry to support Pastor Green with some next level stuff. And a boat person is telling you you ain't ready. Can I break this down? God equips the call. Yeah. 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 God equips the call. It's not about that you are this saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, Harold's chicken, mild sauce licking, got it all right kind of stuff before you do some ministry. God will take your wretch like Pastor Green and myself, dust us off, clean us up. It's not about your ability, it's about your availability. Did anybody catch what Peter did before he walked out on faith? He said, Lord, if it's you, let me come. Peter prayed. Can I break this down? He prayed. Guess what prayer is? Communicating with God. Prayer is communicating with God. Lord, if that be you, let me come roll with you on this water. And so note to self, when God moves you, pray first. Because sometimes it's a boat person in disguise of God telling you to jump out. And if you hadn't had a conversation with pastor, 
You trying to start a ministry at Life Church under Life Church and pastor don't even know nothing about it. Somebody say, out of order. Out of order. <laughs> then he got out the boat after he prayed. Then he walked on water after he prayed. Then he stepped out on faith after he prayed. Step off the boat if you want to. Look at you. <laughs> Step in the deep end and above the pool and you don't know how to swim. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Peter, Peter got down off the boat, walked on water and came towards Jesus. God sometimes has to uber you away from some folks in your life. You know, you look at your Uber and it tells you where you are and it, you tell it where you want to go and, and then the Uber comes and gets you. Sometimes God needs to Uber you to a place where he can use you. He told Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, cross this Jordan and all this people to the land that I'm giving you, the sons of Israel. Look at God move me. He told Esther, I command you to, to risk your own life and go before the king. And she did. Look at God move me. But are you going to be like Jonah? And God tells you to go to Nineveh. But you decide to go to Tarsus. And guess what? Our favorite phrase doesn't work on God. You know what our favorite phrase is? You see what had happened was. <laughs> you sin before God. And you're talking about you see what had happened was. God knows your heart. Peter. <laughs> Walked on water. Can I break this thing down? Can I break it down? Let's break it. Let's break it. I'm ready for life point number three. Go with me to Acts 4 verses 8 through 13. This sets up the look at God use me. Because we know God has chosen us. We know God has Ubered us to a place to where he's getting ready to use us and prepare us for ministry. But now watch this. Our last life point is Look at God use me. Acts 4, 8 to 13 says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are called to the account today for an act of kindness shown to man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, watch this, it says, Then know this, you are all of the people of Israel. It is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you were crucified, but whom God has raised from the dead, this man stands before you healed. God used Peter and John in this text to perform miracles. Can I break it down? God can use you to perform miracles. God can use you as an intercessory prayer warrior for healing, for church growth for delivery, for saving marriages, for, for making bad children get good up. <laughs> and when you invoke the power of in the name of Jesus, demons tremble at that name. There's power in the name. There's healing in the name. There's deliverance in the name. It's not about the size of your issue. It's about the size of your God. So he can use you if you're available. Moses was living on the backside of the desert. A total failure as the prince of Egypt. And God called him to deliver a nation. Nehemiah, he was living in Persia in complete obscurity serving as a cupbearer but God called him to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem Mary was a teenager living in Nazareth when God called us her to be the mother of the Messiah Peter would have died being an ordinary fisherman 
He might have opened a J and J. But he's responsible for spreading the gospel ministry. Do you see a pattern here? God is using what John Legend would call ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Ordinary people like you and me doing extraordinary things because we're not acting under our authority. We're under the authority of the Almighty. So what has God called you to do here at Life Church? I'll tell you, it's something wonderful. It's something extraordinary. It's something bigger than you could even imagine or think. And it's not about the grandness of the congregation. It's about the people that you help transform. When you start transforming from the inside out, God is equipping you and putting more Jesus in you, more anointing in you, so that folks can see the Jesus in you. And you're helping them improve their transformation velocity. Some folks are transforming, but God says, I can transform you faster if you worship me some of you like to praise but watch this worship is asking God to come in me clean me up praise as you said I adore you God I thank you God but worship is saying God clean me up for your service that's what worship is the Lord's work has not always been accomplished by talented people intelligent people or even strong people it's about faithful people Noah was a drunk Abraham was old Isaac was a daydreamer Jacob was a liar Moses had a stuttering problem Samson was a womanizer Rahab was a prostitute David was an adulterer and a murderer Elijah was suicidal. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. Peter denied Christ three times. Martha worried about everything. The Samaritan woman was divorced multiple times. Paul was too religious. Lazarus, he was dead. But if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would we be? Let us stand to our feet at this time. The Bible tells us that my grace is sufficient. My power works best in your weakness. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 10, each of you should use whatever gifts you have in order to serve people as faithful stewards over God's grace. Little is much when God is in it. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Romans 8 and 28 breaks it down like this. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Yes, God, you can use me. I'm available to you. Hear me well, Life Church. You have been shaped to serve God. All of your past experiences, trials are shaping you to help somebody along the way. 
You have may have had an issue with drugs. And the power of your testimony is more powerful than mine. Because you will meet them where they are. That's the ministry. Some of you are on the verge of being used in a mighty way here at this ministry. But you think you're not talented enough. You don't have a degree, but God says, I'm going to equip you if you just step out on the wall. See, both people will have you stay in the pews. There's very little ministry that happens in the pews. The pews is about you getting some word so that you can go out and minister. transformed by the Jesus in you. Stop letting your past define your ministry today. Can I say that one more time? Stop allowing your past to define your ministry today. Look at God choose you. Look at God move you. The door of the church is open. Pastor. Come on, look at God.